right? We're back on The Morning Brew with friends with my old friend, Andrew Connors. It's nice to see you this morning. It's great to be on. And Andrew is the curator at the Albuquerque Museum of Art and History. And you guys have a new show called Common Ground Art in New Mexico. And this is the new permanent collection exhibit, right? Exactly. Well, it's actually not new. It's, it's probably for 30 years we've had a permanent collection exhibit called Common Ground Art in New Mexico. But this is the latest iteration, and we really wanted right. to mix things up. With well, because the, the I don't know how you guys even figure out what to pull out of that permanent collection, because it is one time years ago I got taken back in the vault, and it's like a warehouse full of stuff. And how do you like go through that? And as the curator, how do you must be like a kid in a candy store running through there saying, I want that, and I want that, put that out there. That's the perfect description. Yeah. And luckily, we had a great team. Uh, we're, I worked with Tom Antresian and Steve mm -hmm. Pettit and others on staff, and they said, no, 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 no <laughs> not for that. Um, but we had so many great objects in the collection, and our curator of history, Deb Slaney, mm -hmm. allowed me to poach from her collection as well. Oh, wow. So it's a mix of art and history objects, and we really want to tell the story of New Mexican creativity in a much more pluralistic way. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't live segregated lives. You know, mm -hmm. um, All of us live next to each other, and we share right. ideas, and so we really wanted to do an art exhibition the way that New Mexicans live. You know, where you have Native Americans living next to Anglos and next to Hispanics and next to African Americans. And, you know, we all are sort of in the mix together. Right. And it's rare. In, New Mexico is one of the few places where that actually happens, I think, too. It, exactly. And the ironic thing is that many of our museums are culturally specific. Right. So we, there are very few museums that get to tell the story the way that the Albuquerque Museum can tell it. In the way that Albuquerqueans kind of live it, too. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. how did you figure out what was going to be in the exhibit and how did you... And how do you kind of rotate things through and pick them, well, essentially? The, As the curator, I mean, that's a... Yeah, the, the first thing that we wanted to do was pick a couple of themes. Um, basically, the previous installations have been sort of chronological. Okay. And people don't live lives chronologically. You know, you mm -hmm. sort of jump back and forth through time uh, in your interests. And so right. we picked themes uh, focusing on the real New Mexico. What is the real New Mexico? And of course, the Chamber of Commerce has a version of, re of what real New Mexico is. This is an installation shot of the, the new installation. And you can see that there are landscapes mixed um, with cityscapes. And then mm. this is a contemporary themes area where we focus on more abstract works of art. Is that a Raymond but, Johnson? Um, there, I don't think there was a Raymond Johnson in that shot. But then this is portraits, um, people, real New Mexicans. So the Fritz Scholder, a Native American mm -hmm. artist, Edward Gonzalez, a Hispanic artist, uh, fi um, Felipe Arch Chaletta, Hispanic artist from northern New Mexico, and uh, Tom, uh, Tom Palmore. So artists from all different backgrounds shown next to each other. Uh, this is a terrific example of the art in Albuquerque looking very different from the art in northern New Mexico. And the art of northern mm -hmm. New Mexico is all sort of romanticized. And their uh, pride of place in this gallery is this great portrait from 1906 of Mr. and Mrs. Armijo here in Albuquerque looking as up-to-date and modern as anybody in Philadelphia or Boston or right. anywhere in the country at that time. Right. And then to the right is a painting by a um, Taos artist who was much more interested in the romance, the um, rural nature of the pastoral the quality. Exactly. Yes. So we have both of these things going on in New Mexico at the same time. Uh, Sheldon Harvey is a terrific Navajo artist, and that's his self-portrait in the lower left. Um, that's a Rudy Fernandez self-portrait in the upper left. So are these real New Mexicans? You know, how do you portray yourself in a self-portrait? Right. And then, of course, we have some of the great traditions represented from New Mexico, in this case, uh, Hispanic Santos, and we have Native American ceramics, Native American textiles, all mashed up and with the stories telling uh, each other different ways, uh, Very cool. different ways of seeing our experience. And in one of those photos, you saw on the wall there, it's a purple wall with some writing on it. Mm -hmm. That was a poem by our friend Carlos Contreras. Exactly. Um, and you brought in a shirt. Exactly. Well, the, the, I brought in the hoodie um, that inspired that. Um, Carlos was doing a uh, presentation at uh, Tractor Brewing, and um, I bought this hoodie from him. And um, then I read the poem on it, and I said, this encapsulates perfectly those themes of people and place. And um, so I talked to our educator, Elizabeth Becker, and all of the staff and said, what do you think about asking an artist to write on the wall? And there it is, uh, the way that it appears in the gallery. And everybody said, 
there literature, poetry combined with visual arts, it's perfect. Right. Uh, so Carlos very nicely uh, came to the museum and wrote it on the gallery wall. How long for did us. it take to so, do that? That looks oh, he's hard. Oh, fast. He's really, really fast. And um, he said, um, you know, I got to sort of get in the zone. I'm going to test my pens out. Um, and so I went back to get a drop cloth in case he spilled paint on the floor. And by the time I got back, he was almost done. And I said, whoa, wow. stop. I got to take a picture of you doing this. Um, so he probably, it probably took him 20 minutes. Wow. Um, at most. When wow. he really gets in the zone, he, he creates beautiful art. Um, this is a textile created by Ramona Sakiestewa, a mm. Hopi weaver. And um, it's not traditional Hopi design. And in the Hopi tradition, men are the weavers. Mm -hmm. So Ramona is breaking new ground and experimenting by being a weaver herself. Um, Paul Sarkisian, one of the great mm -hmm. painters in New Mexico from a oh, great yeah. family of artists. His son is a terrific uh, video artist. Um, and this is a painting that looks very three-dimensional. And um, it's kind of wonderful because there's a text on the newspaper um, about a new book written by jo about Georgia O'Keeffe in the 1980s. <laughs> so there are all of these references, cross-references across the galleries, artist uh, to artist. New Mexicans tradition. referencing other New Mexicans, and it, that's very cool. Exactly, and the much larger world, because mm -hmm. all of these artists were aware of the much larger world from you know, prehistoric uh, ceramic artists that were influenced by um, artists from California and artists from Mexico. So New Mexico has always been a crossroads for visual ideas. The problem is that we often tell the story in segregated sections, right. and um, that segregation doesn't help anybody. We've got right. to mix it all up together. Right. Well, the uh, for the permanent exhibit, it's not always permanent and fixed, right? right. Mm -hmm. It keeps kind of rotating, and you can bring stuff in and bring stuff out, right? Yeah. Which is something the old exhibit didn't do. Right. Um, the, but the challenge is that as soon as we do that, then we have new objects that our docents who give the tours have don't to learn really know, it. and they have to learn about it. Uh, so we try to keep some of the, the real masterpieces, the favorite works, on right. view as much as possible. Um, but th this, um, well, there's a um, Nicolás Herrera truck um, that's this great piece. Um, it's called Los Alamos Death Truck. <laughs> and so it's building on the Hispanic tradition of go. the death carts. Um, right. But there, the devil is riding with nuclear warheads, um, presumably down to the waste isolation pilot <laughs> plant. Um, so, so many artists are telling different stories that are not necessarily just from their own cultural group. They're stories right. that relate to all of us. And the more we can break down those barriers between cultures and the lack of understanding one culture to another, the more we'll understand New Mexico better. Excellent. So the exhibit is open every day at the Albuquerque Museum of Art and History. Except Monday. Except Monday. When closed. the entire museum is closed. Exa exactly. That's your um, day off. So we're open, ni we're open 9 to 5. Um, six days a week and it's your Albuquerque Museum. You know, it belongs to all of us so we've got to take advantage of it. Sounds good. Well, I'm, and we can also pick up hoodies just like this one in purple mm -hmm. at the museum store, right? Exactly. Um, I Carlos love it. Contreras created um, a different color hoodie for us for the museum. That's cool. And we'll be back in a couple of seconds with Monica Bencomo. She's going to make me do some exercises. Excellent. Yes. We could all use that. Right, no doubt. On the Morning Brew with friends.